Đây. Hey, so who is leading today? I think it is you. <laughs> we were just waiting for the first person to uh, to ask. That's funny. Exactly. You fell for the trap. Oh man, I've made a horrible mistake. All right, let's see. We even have minutes for today. All right, I will copy our agenda from last week or the template here and create a new one. Um, hey, I just learned that Stu wasn't in joining us today. Is uh, are we doing this? Sure. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's start then. Um, let me share the document in the chat. David will say this. Yeah, let's the no buy tell Petter. Let's just let it go. Ah, I, I don't want to take <laughs> this away from you, David. I'm sorry. Uh, no, sorry. no. Uh, nothing happened. We're good. <sighs> what did I do? Um if you at any point would like to do this, then just say, say word, David. Got you. Do we have anybody new on the call who would like to uh, introduce themselves to the community. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I actually subscribed to the Google group yesterday. And my name is Leonardo. And mostly I, I just got an invitation. I'm just here to see what's going on in, in the community. I'm a new user. and. Currently using Kubevert to run a build system for RPMs. And I think that that's it. <laughs> Interesting. Does it work? Yeah. Sorry, uh, couldn't hear you. I was just joking whether it works or not. Welcome to the community, <laughs> Leonardo. And I'm yeah, curious. Actually, it, 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 yeah, go ahead. Um, are, are you using anything like Tekton or anything like that to build a pipeline uh, for these build machines or? Uh, no, we actually have a service that builds RPMs, uh, but uh, it relies on on some software that it, that needs to install um, some containers using the, the, the low level kernel API and that, and that 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 makes it enable to run on a on a bare on a usual container. So, but we we still wanted to use Kubernetes, and and so we are, I'm I'm, I'm basically trying to run this particular service on this part of the service anyway using Kubevert in the virtual machine. Excellent. Yeah, we've actually um, so this use case isn't that uncommon. Um, Kubevert for build systems is. 
uh, kind of one of the surprising use cases, I would say, that uh, kind of popped up quite a bit in the community uh, in the past few years. So great, and you're not alone and uh, welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody else would like to introduce themselves? Okay, let's uh, reverse with the agenda then. Um, there is nothing on the agenda, but we do have. Oh, well, is there? Does anybody want to bring up just anything? Convert wise. Okay, then we can go straight to Federica's item on the pull requests that need attention. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I, I've been I've been working on this uh, this uh, PRs. They are kind of uh, um, a long uh, standing task about uh, adding more um, documentation about the CI infrastructure. And, and yeah, they are up for review. Um, and yeah, if uh, if anyone interested could take a look, uh, and if feedback is is very appreciated, there are three of them. The first the first one I put the links in the document. The first one is in a, an infrastructure overview of what we have in all the uh, the the systems that are are used to run our our end-to-end um, uh, -end test and all the all the jobs that are are run in the in the prs and so on uh, the second one is is this is a came uh, from from a, a question from how to how to scale our our brow instance um, and yeah, this is this is kind of the the uh, procedure of of uh, if you, if you want to run your specific uh, uh, QVirt end-to-end uh, -end tests in our infrastructure, how how could you prepare first and then add uh, your your the secret of of your of how to access your cluster in our uh, in our infrastructure, um, and and yeah, the last one is about uh, how to if you are interested in in uh, contributing. In, um, in the as an infrastructure maintainer, uh, what would be the like the steps? Uh, what what is required? What are the privileges and 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 the the, the things that the obligations that, that uh, are involved in this role? So yeah, any any feedback is is very very welcome. If you f find something that is missing, even something that is not covered by these three PRs. Uh, that would be would be very interesting interesting to extend the documentation. Nice. Um, any questions for Federica? Okay. Um, last call for open floor agenda. If anybody wants to raise anything before we jump to the mailing list and box scrap. Okay, um, let me share my window and let's hope to do it very quick and go back into July 27th and forward. So I will just skip this one since it gets enough attention, but then there's this unanswered threat. Hello everyone, hot plug. So suggestion to extend. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I looked at this. I give a, a brief summary. The idea is to be able to mark uh, volumes being attached to a VMI as being hot pluggable right out of the gate. So today, if you want to uh, hot plug, be able to add and remove a volume, you do that after the VMI has started. And you can only remove uh, a volume that you have previously hot plugged. So if you want to have something that you can dynamically put on a VMI and take away from a VMI, it has to be hot pluggable. But the problem here is when you start the VMI, there's no way of saying, I want this volume that we're starting with to be something that's hot pluggable, meaning that I can later take this volume away from the VMI at runtime. Uh, so that's what this, um, this PR and this uh, feature request is doing. It's saying, let's be able to mark upfront declaratively uh, when we're starting a VMI, that 
these sets of uh, volumes are going to be starting to hot plug away, which means that they can be removed later on if we want, or dynamically re-added if we want. And uh, to do that, the implementation requires um, starting this uh, hot plug attachment pod at boot time with the VMI uh, and allowing these volumes to be added to the VMI uh, through this attachment pod uh, during the start flow, which is something new. Um, all seems totally reasonable, feasible. Uh, I reviewed the PR and um, I don't know the person who wrote the PR is here, but it, it looks like, like I, I definitely think that the, the idea makes a lot of sense. The execution, the PR uh, needs some just shifting of uh, where things are taking place, like the ordering that certain things are taking place during the start flow. And then I think it'll work. So it's fairly close. It might require a decent amount of rework in the PR, but it's not like the PR is totally wrong. It's doing the right things, but in the wrong order, I would say. That's pretty cool to see such a huge PR coming in. Nice. OK, uh, thanks, David, for shedding the light on it. So this one gets more than enough attention. Um, and then there is that comment I have to answer. And just me take a note. So we should be good on this front. Now let's try go through the issues for the last seven days, AB8. There is nothing I have done this time, which is awesome. So First one is error starting virtual machine unauthorized. Get machine, blah, 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 that works. Where the cat will start, the machine is unauthorized. Yeah, that, I mean, that seems like the user simply doesn't have our back to start the virtual machine. Hmm. Or, or access to the start sub resource at least. Right. That's. It's a, ah, I was about to say it's surprising, but then I realized I always run as an admin, so I that's why I never hit these issues. Well, we add um, some of these default things, um, default roles to the. Um, excuse me. Let me back up. There's default. Uh, users like admin, um, editor, and user, something like that. I don't exactly remember. And we aggregate these roles to give, give access to virtual machines to those default users. And as long as a user, like an actual user, um, inherits those, um, they, they should be authorized. So in this case, my guess is um, whatever account is being used to try to start the virtual machine doesn't inherit from one of these standard default accounts. Mm, so they don't have to create a full RBIC just for this. They can refer something existing. Um, yeah, let me, maybe I can quickly um, find the user guide for that. Post it in the chat. So I would point them to this and uh, just make sure that the user trying to start the virtual machine has the expected RBAC permissions. Uh, 
Awesome, thanks. Uh, then all 43 CPU pending to return run CPU topology on VMI. It seems to be quite active. Um, Vladek, is, does this need more attention or I think it's it's good and it's waiting and then? Um, there's a similar, uh, there's a similar bug in the, um, in the Bugzilla uh, that's been investigated. But yeah, uh, we need more logs uh, from that specific um, uh, setup. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, third one. Disk not attached to multiple VMs as read write. There is no action there. I'm trying to mount an NFS PVC to virtual machine instance replica set in order to get an additional disk shared among different virtual machines. And I get uh, issues saying that it's, it can't be done. So it seems like multiple instances are trying to access the same file. Yeah, no, he's saying that he's trying to mount read write to multiple. Is that okay? Is that something that should work? I don't know. Mm. I, I, I would say no. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound like. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to write a NFS PVC to, in order to get additional disk read and write. Uh, so the the request That's here is to. Work. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to work because. Do we have an alternative for people who want to write something, read write for multiple machines? Sure. Read write mini um, PVC. Ah, I see. <laughs> that makes sense, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm curious how this got mounted. So the PVC itself must be read write mini. Let's see. Uh, we're not going to be able to see from here, are we? No. Well, read write, uh, you can have multiple. It, it, it's node based, so they would just the pods would just end up on the same node. So you can have multiple pods accessing a re, accessing a read write once if they're running on the same node. Okay. Yeah, the once first many is is a node thing. So I guess libvirt or cumu it sounds like puts a file lock. On yeah. The, so. Uh, yes. um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, probably be better to import the NFS volumes in their VMs directly if they can. Um, but. I'm just not entirely sure what it's trying to do. I mean, obviously, two VMs cannot write to the same image. It looks like you want to connect. Uh, NFS storage to his VM. Yeah, then it doesn't have to contain um, the image. It, it doesn't have to be the same image. It can be just an empty, like a secondary, or I, I don't know. <laughs> or he, he should, uh, I think he should boot up from uh, one disk and uh, just mount the data disk to NFS. That's right. But then I think that have... what it tries to achieve is uh, use this boot image for NFS. But it will be slow. Not related to being slow. I mean, it doesn't, you cannot do, you cannot use the same image for two VMs. So it either has to be cloned or has to have a working copy like a cow. Yeah, I mean, oh, obviously okay. CDI cloning is one alternative for this guy. If, if you know, there's one image that you want to be running on multiple VMs, you can clone it. 
or launch it as a read only and use yeah. there's a way of having the ephemeral backing storage to it I, I believe we allow that even for a pvc i'm not 100 percent sure but we need to look at that it's not going to work with read write okay i'm hearing many alternatives to this so um it's won't work right so one way would be to have a pvc with read write manner what's that uh that won't work either i mean the key, you can't can't have them you won't allow that for that. the boot disk it's not gonna no. work um let me find the user guide thing I think we can suggest to him to to basically mount the image itself as, a, as another disk and the storage that you want to connect to the NFS as, an, as a secondary disk. This is what I tried to do. Here's a here's a link. We have this concept of a ephemeral volume uh, where PVC can be ephemeral. So we can attach the PVC as read only. And then behind the scenes, we're going to create a backing volume uh, on a. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a good, good an empty direction. disk. So the kaboot, this is going to be, it's not going to be persistent. But they can boot. Maybe that satisfies their use case. I'm not sure. Yep. Well, from my reading, it sounds like they have a root disk, but they want to add a secondary disk uh, using this NFS PVC. In that case, I mean, even on a Windows 10 volume, isn't there uh, NFS mounting support these days? If they want to directly mount within the guest. Yeah. So I mean, that would they... be the right, right way to approach it if you were trying to solve the underlying problem rather than find a use case for, uh, you know, multiple sharing uh, like a secondary disk. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of strange. So the person has created an actual disk image on an NFS. So it's like a disk image on a file system shared by NFS, which is then that same disk image is trying to be attached to multiple virtual machines. So it's trying to act like an NFS volume, but at the a lower level, uh, and yeah, that's not going to work. So directly connecting to the NFS server within the guest would potentially allow them to get the behavior they're looking for. It wouldn't be treated as a disk, though. That's kind of they're trying to make it. They're putting a what the, they're want to, wanting it to be essentially a hard drive attached to this virtual machine and the hard drive is backed by NFS. That's... Yeah, I think uh, unless it's like read only many, I don't think it'll work. Yeah. Uh, so the, the ephemeral thing wouldn't help. I'm sorry. Well, it depends on what they're wanting to do yeah, with this NFS. Ephemeral would be if they were, if they were booting from that. Uh, or if they just need to share data across it. Uh, like if they just want an NFS mount that is read only. But I mean, the fact they have read write means that's unlikely. Okay, let's leave it at this. I'm getting 
headache from storage a little bit. Um, all right, let's see how it evolves. And the last one that's seven days old is for six scale. Convert my users are using more CPU than requested. Are we? Ah, did, uh, do you know whether this was brought up on the six scale call last week? Yeah, it was. Ah, awesome. We are thinking about it still. Sweet. Um, there's one that isn't trashed, so I think we talked about this the last week. Um, yes. Okay, I think we are done. If somebody dreams of a great solution for this person with the read write, then please write it in the comments. And any closing words? Have a great evening or afternoon. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye.